forward, may I please request Ms. Priyanka Mishra, Director and Country General Manager, Umicor India Private Limited, RBM Umicor, to please share your detailed insights with us on how closing the loop in India at Giga Factory scale. Requesting Ms. Priyanka Mishra to please come over to the dais. Over to you, ma'am. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. May I audible? Good. So, um, thank you very much for uh, coming over, and it's a, it's a great privilege to be here and talk about uh, Yumicode in this space. Um, I'm Priyanka Mishra. My office is based out of Mumbai, and would happy would be happy to connect with uh, any of you interested in these topics that we'll be talking about. Let me first introduce about Yumicore. Some of you know us, some of you don't. We are a Belgian company, 200 years old. Uh, present in this space, we have experience of working with precious metals for more than 135 years. Uh, that's the experience we bring on uh, this industry. And uh, we're primarily a circular materials technology. What that means for us is uh, we know how to work with precious metals and we create advanced technologies and advanced materials for various applications in different industries. Uh, and we also know how to recycle it back in the most efficient way for over a century today. Uh, our primary focus, business focus, has been to be a leader in sustainability long before it became fashionable. Um, we've been talking about circularity and sustainability for almost 30, 35 years. Uh, when this was not such a fancy term to use with the investors in presentations. Um, but this has been supported by the mega trends. And that's why we have managed to stay ahead of the curve for so long. Uh, mobility transformation, growing need for advanced materials and circularity for critical elements is something we recognize as a trend 20, 30 years ago and have been working towards that, which has been driving our unique business model from metals to material solutions. Our group structure primarily, just to introduce, because we do a lot of things with precious metals, but uh, primarily catalysis, um, energy and surface technologies, uh, and recycling. So today we will focus more on the rechargeable battery materials because that's what the focus is. RISE 2030 is our strategy where we want, we are already and we are proclaiming to be the reliable transformation partner, truly in terms of technology partnership and supply reliability, innovation and technology leader, with years of scientific data uh, backup, we are their sustainability champion and excellence in execution. Coming particularly to uh, rechargeable battery materials solutions, um, we have been the first CAM and pre-CAM uh, producers in the Europe, and now we are also entering the North American market which is just to go, just goes on to show and also taking from my previous uh, presenter, we are where the market is growing. So uh, it's, it's a company very aggressive and very close to the market. We're already carbon neutral in Europe and have aggressive plans uh, with the same for our other plans. We have over 15 years of um, ethical and sustainable storage. This was also addressed in, uh, in the opening session here. It's important to note that while a cost of cost per unit price may be lower, but the overall cost of what you're buying uh, needs to encompass everything. And that's where sustainable sourcing, ethical sourcing uh, plays a big role. We are very proud to say that we have powered almost more, more than 1 million electric vehicles already. That's the kind of expertise we bring on. And almost one in five batteries produced today are with Yumiko technology. This is an overall landscape that we have. Uh, basically, what I want to tell you is that we are quite backward integrated. And hence, we say when we say we have the capability to supply at a particular price at a particular time, we mean business. We have the experience and we have uh, the entire chain arranged with that. We're present in Asia already, in Korea and China, in North America and uh, Europe. When it comes to um, technology and IP portfolio, uh, also we've been uh, studying the trends. Uh, we are present where, we, uh, where the market is asking for, and we're also foreseeing the kind of technology needs that are coming from 
incumbents and the uh, OEMs and also the startups. And hence, we're also designing our portfolio accordingly. So while we have, uh, with respect to various energy densities, we have short to medium terms, uh, a design to performance orientation and a design to cost. There are pros and cons to both. And it really depends on what is it that you want your end product to perform on. Um, it's cells and batteries are going to be uh, an enabler to your end product and the performance and the guarantee that you're giving to the end user. So keeping that in mind, we, we can help you design the cathode active material to that accuracy. The battery world is really growing. Uh, there's a lot of activity happening the world over. India market is talking. We are here at the battery show. A lot of excitement is happening. Uh, a lot of policy changes are happening, but one of the uh, challenges we must understand and from us as a supplier is that um, the end, end industry variances affect the supply of cathode active material to a very large extent. What do I mean by that? Uh, for example, in mobility, if automotive industry does not do well or it catches a flu, there is a huge impact on our ability to supply and our whole backward integrated chain where we, we need to plan two years, three years in advance. So that way we are uh, very susceptible to our end industry variances. Uh, there are varying degree of alignment which we work for and that's why we prefer to work in uh, very advanced stages of a partnership or a joint venture uh, with large companies to, to safeguard interests of both parties. Recycled content is going to be uh, the future of anything that we do with uh, metals. We are already present there. But the mine investment lifetime is something that we can't ignore in near future, and that remains a challenge. The content rules also for recycled uh, material is still evolving in various degrees across regions, taking care of each regional interest, etc. But we are waiting to, as, as a global player, we are waiting for a global uh, alignment on this front. And last but not the least, and I really couldn't resist this, uh, there will always be uh, a cheaper supplier, a cheaper RM supplier. Uh, and it's really a choice that, as a buyer, you would be making. And that's fine, because it, again, depends on your end product and the promise you are going to make to your end user which is absolutely fine, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But we need to understand, more than cost, what else is, is going to be uh, part of it. Sometimes a cheaper tech or an RM actually gets much more expensive in the long term, be it in batch failures or rejections or accidents, brand value degradation, etc. So you, it needs to be a very informed decision and not a short term uh, number to number comparison is something that we've been trying to educate our customers. Um, also, what are the hidden, what are the hidden costs? Um, I would love it if the industry starts to ask, why is X product cheaper rather than why is X product more expensive? I think those kind of questions, when it comes from industry and buyers, there will be a lot more informed decision. Having said that, um, I would also uh, like to impress that CAM, uh, cathode active material, RM, is slightly different from the rest of uh, chemical sourcing that we do. And here, I think for the Indian market, a little bit more experience is required. Uh, the sourcing strategy really needs to be different. It's not a standard chemical, not a commodity, not a uh, specialty yet. And flexibility and imbalance uh, along the supply chain are fine kind of an approach is not working anymore. It's different. It doesn't work like that. Uh, mining juniors, if, if people want to go back to the, the small time miners, there is a huge risk um, associated with that. And there's a reason why players like us are in business for 200 years and we're standing here and talking to you. Everybody can treat everything. Uh -uh, no, everybody cannot treat everything. It might be a very simple metal, which all of us know from the periodic table, but the treatment and conversion of that metal to produce the result you want takes years of experience. And qualifications can be done at any point of time is another uh, major differentiator for this kind of an RM.
We have some new technology product offerings also in, again, keeping in line with the trends that we are seeing in market. We are seeing the demands coming up. Um, just to talk about it in short, um, our silicon anode technology, which we have launched for higher density, faster charging. Um, great, great many uh, technical advantages, which we already have a lot of data. We're ready to sample, so feel free to reach out to us. But basically, uh, price advantage and a clear production scalability. Also, the fact that the, the raw material would be abundantly uh, available. And we have managed to find a sweet spot between performance, cost, uh, long-term uh, sustainability as well. The second technology which we are very uh, excited about is the solid state technology. Again, this is a design to performance. Keeping in mind uh, with the trends that the, that the market is going 2030 onwards, so we already have our data with here and we can start talking to you about this. We have aligned these development roadmaps so that we can respond to the flexibility that the market needs. And a very important topic, which Umicore stands for, closing the loop. What does that mean? So we take the material, we supply it to you, and then what? We mean business when we say we close the loop. So at various stages, we have material input. So we can take it from the ore and the smelters directly and uh, uh, start from the refining stages. Or we can also have the whole chain where we take the material at the, at the stage of our recycling. So we take in inputs from battery cell makers as your factory rejects, uh, end of life applications, collections, and we all, we have 135 years of experience in this, by the way. Uh, and then we are able to extract the, we are able to upcycle the material very importantly and close the loop for the world at large. We have a very unique and proprietary technology um, and especially in nickel, cobalt, and lithium uh, space, we, we have the know-how, we have the IP, and a very, very uh, measured way, a measured impact that we have in terms of carbon footprint. What's very important is there's no downcycling when we do this. The recycling, actually, we are managing to upcycle because we have better quality inputs. Uh, we have higher purity and a higher yield which has come from a years of operational efficiency. For further questions, we would love to talk to you. I have my colleagues, um, Sonal, who is present, who's handling the commercial part of rechargeable battery material, and myself, feel free to write to us or catch us over during the uh, event. And uh, thank you very much for your patience. Thank you so much, Ms. Priyanka Mishra, for sharing your detailed insights and drawing light on the ever-changing world of batteries. May I please take the honor on behalf of Informa Markets India to share a token of appreciation with you.